I was standing in line at the dollar store this week, and a man in a business suit was in front of me. He stepped up to the counter. The cashier asked how we would like to pay. His product was $3.75. He put his debit card into the machine, used his PIN number, and bought this inexpensive item with his debit card. I'm Ron Brown with Tech for Senior, where we teach seniors about technology and help them stay safe when purchasing online products, particularly in upcoming Prime Days. So today, Bob Gustisha and I have got together and we want to talk about debit cards and how you need to keep this secure and safe, maybe not use them as much, or let me think about that. Let's see what I have to say. It might surprise you. So let me tell you the difference between a debit card and a credit card. Let's say you had $200 and you wanted to put it in the bank. You would then go to a bank, see the bank manager. The bank manager would take your $200, open an account for you, and, and deposit your money. But how do you get your money out of the bank? The bank manager would then give you a debit card and you would then be able to electronically get the money out of your bank, that $200 that you have, you could use to pay for groceries or whatever. But the important thing that you understand is it doesn't require a credit check. There are no contractual obligations. And most important, it's not a credit card. It's easy to get, even if you've had very poor credit ratings. All right, let's talk about a credit card. Credit card is a different situation. If you want a credit card, then you have to sign a contractual obligation with a credit card company. Now, most of you would probably do that with MasterCard, Visa, or American Express. So this involves a lengthy credit card application in which there is a credit check. Not everybody can get a credit card. You have to have a good credit rating. You then have to read a very lengthy contract and if you read all the paragraphs in that contract, they are all in the favor of the credit card company, except for one paragraph, and that is fraud protection. And that is one of the big advantages of a credit card is fraud protection. You now have your credit card and can use it. So we have debit cards and credit cards. And I do appreciate the choice that you have and that people do not want to have credit cards and they want to live debt free. So they use debit cards. I appreciate that as well. But you have to remember that a debit card does not offer security. For example, if you lose your wallet on the bus and someone finds it, but the $200 in your wallet is gone, you can't go to your bank and say, hey, someone took $200 out of my wallet. It's the same thing as that man with the business suit. If there was a skimmer on that card reader that he paid $3.75 for, and he put his PIN number in, they could drain his bank account very easily. So there is a big risk in using a debit card, particularly with electronic machines, online, etc. So how can you protect yourself with a debit card? And that's the topic I want to talk about today, because you can link your debit card into your Apple Pay or Google Pay, which is a very secure way of doing a transaction. It doesn't give any information about you to the vendor. It is an added level of security that will make your debit card a much safer device to use. Bob and I have teed up today and we have a couple of videos to show you about using Apple Pay and Google Pay and why it's so important. All right, let's look at how this works. Let's take our traditional credit card. What you do is you put this into the reader and the transaction occurs. And as you put it into the reader, the credit card number and PIN number are recorded in the reader to make that transaction occur. The problem with this is, is if there's a skimmer, the bad guys have come and actually Fada made a physical altercation to the reader, this can compromise your card and of course provide the bad guys with some very important information. 
Now this doesn't occur often, but is a potential risk, particularly with readers in restaurants that are often left unattended. So it is, there are some problems with this. So then we have a situation where it has tap and pay, where you can actually take your credit card if it has that little tap and pay signal on there and you actually can tap the card. Well, how does that work? That uses an older technology called EMV. So your credit card number and your PIN number are not actually transferred. So it is a secure transaction that occurs between that. This is more, more secure than using than inserting it in a reader. But of course, in my case, it never works or it only works some of the time because I have my credit card in my back pocket. It's sometimes the tap works, sometimes the tap doesn't work. I have to often request a new card from my credit card company because it always works better when I get a new card. So there are a lot of complications with this. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So what we're going to talk about today is Google Pay, Samsung Pay, and Apple Pay. And that's where your phone now becomes your credit card. There's a link between your phone and your credit card company. This becomes your credit card. I'm going to show you how to set that up in a minute, but there are a lot of advantages because of course we use a different technology than the old EMV that didn't work that well. We use, it's called NFC or near field communication. In other words, there's a radio chip in this phone that actually sends a broadcast to the reader. Now you probably understand Wi-Fi, you understand Bluetooth. Well, NFC is yet another form of broadcasting that it has, that is available on most cell phones. Now the advantage of NFC is that it only broadcasts one or two centimeters. It, you have to be very close for it to the receiver to pick up the signal. The other thing that happens is when NFC broadcasts the, uh, from your phone to the reader, it only sends a transaction number. There's no identifier or no information that is kept or there is no information that's transmitted to the reader other than a very long complicated number. So that makes this very secure and it also it works at least in, I've been using mine for a week now. It works all the time. It's not like that stupid credit card where you tap and pay and it doesn't work. Okay, I'm here today and I'm going to be using my Google Pay on my phone. And I've got Andrea here with me because she is a wonderful person and a friend of mine for a long, long time. We used to be in Rotary together and she's a kind-hearted soul that's going to help me if I have trouble with this. Oh my gosh! So now I'm here at On The Fly. If you stop by at Comox Airport, be sure and come on the fly and buy something, okay? <laughs> All right, so here we go. And we are going to now, we're going to charge this. We're going to confirm pay. And I'm not going to leave her a tip, darn it anyway. And I'm going to take my phone now, as you can see my phone here, and I'm going to put it over top. And you'll hear it click. And it is now approved. And we're now going to print. And here comes my receipt. And that is how you use Google Pay on your phone. It's so easy. You've got to try it, all right? Safeguarding your online wallet. Ever get that nagging feeling that someone's watching you online? It's not just your cat judging your questionable search history. It's companies, advertisers, and sometimes not-so-friendly folks with less than noble intentions. In our hyper-connected world, protecting your privacy, especially when it comes to your hard-earned cash, is a serious game. Enter device tokens and their digital doppelgangers, the unsung heroes of online security. These technologies act like your personal bodyguards in the digital realm shielding your sensitive information from prying eyes. But who offers these services and how do they differ? Let's dive in. Device tokens, your unique digital mask. Imagine a masquerade ball where everyone's wearing masks, making it impossible to tell who's who. A device token is like your unique mask in the online world. It's a string of random characters assigned to your smartphone, tablet, laptop, or any internet-connected gadget. This token doesn't actually reveal your identity, but instead acts as a stand-in when you interact with websites, apps, and services. Instead of sharing your actual account details with your bank app, for instance, the app uses the token as a reference point. 
Even if a cyber criminal somehow gets their grubby mitts on the token, it's useless to them without the secret decoder ring, which the bank keeps locked up tight. Who's offering device tokens? Device tokens are often implemented by banks, financial institutions, and online payment providers to secure your transactions. However, the specific technology behind them might differ. For example, Apple Pay and Google Pay. These mobile payment platforms rely on device tokens to secure your card details within their digital wallets. EMV 3D Secure 3DS. This protocol, used by many online merchants, often incorporates device tokens to add an extra layer of security to your transactions. Digital doppelgangers, similar tech, different names. Device tokens aren't the only players in the online security game. Several other technologies offer similar protection, each with its unique twist. Virtual card numbers. These temporary card numbers are generated for each online transaction, masking your real card details. Services like privacy.com and many banks offer this feature. Biometric authentication. Instead of relying on passwords, some apps and services use your fingerprint, face, or voice to verify your identity. This makes it much harder for hackers to impersonate you. Two-factor authentication, 2FA. This adds an extra step to the login process, usually by sending a code to your phone. Even if someone steals your password, they can't log in without that code. While these technologies are powerful tools, it's important to remember they're not foolproof. You still need to practice safe online habits, like using strong passwords and being wary of phishing scams. Think of device tokens and their digital doppelgangers as part of a multi-layered security approach, like having a bodyguard, a security system, and a guard dog all working together to keep you safe. Stay safe, stay secure, and the next time you're tapping away on your phone, shopping online, or checking your bank balance, remember, these unsung heroes are quietly working in the background, making sure your digital life and your wallet stay protected. I hope you've enjoyed our video today. Thanks for, to Bob Gustisha for helping me produce this. And we'd sure appreciate that. Like and subscribe. And if you hit that notification, we'll let you know for any new videos that we make in the future. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you soon.